Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia. Welcome to our Friday Live video. Those of you who are hanging around the internet and not probably doing what you're supposed to be doing this morning will know that we went online earlier today talking about that car. That is the Kia K5. So the K5, we finally got information from Kia Canada today and uh, we talked about that car. So feel free to check out our live video link uh, for the Canadian information on that car, the Kia K5. You just go to our YouTube channel, you can uh, find that. Today, we're not talking about that this afternoon though. I mean, we'll probably dip into that a little bit later, but here we are here by Tim's request. Tim is our general manager. We are talking about the Kia Sedona, which is behind me. We're gonna compare and contrast that to the Kia Sorento. We have a lot of customers that have a growing family or a family that they need, uh, you know, larger vehicle for, and they talk about this vehicle or that vehicle, which one's best. Uh, a lot of people like the looks of one or the other. So we're gonna talk about a very similar price range, what you get from one to the other. If you're watching us and you're not live, feel free to join us live any day. Well, camera's going away. Feel free to join us live at any time. Uh, we're at live every weekday at two o'clock and I'll show you how to join us as I walk over to my computer screen. If you're watching and you don't wanna join us and you just wanna skip ahead to this video today, feel free to skip to the three minute mark and we'll get going at that point. In the meantime, let's flip around here and uh, that's a sweet looking car, what do you think? All right, we're gonna skip away from that. I'm gonna show you how to join us live. So if you just go to YouTube, you're probably already on it unless this video is embedded somewhere else. Uh, search for Bramford Kia, this is where we are. And you can simply refresh the page at two o'clock. I'm a hair late today, it's 2.01 right now, but this should work. If our video does not show up live here like it is today on the very home page, just click this video's link right here. It'll be the first video down there. You're looking for this little live now link. Once you click the live now link, you are in. And we have a few people on already. Let me just scroll over. So what I'm doing is I'm making the comments a little bit larger just so that I can see them on our big screen over there that I was just at earlier. And we can talk about, uh, I can take your comments and that kind of thing. All right, so here we go. Well, we'll wait till the three minute mark. You guys still wanna talk K5? Let's talk, uh, somebody missed the video. Da, 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 da. How big are the gauges in the other trims of the K5? So I don't have that information yet. Uh, what we'll do is I'll make a deal, guys. Uh, 35, 40 seconds here, we're going to start this video. Stick around till the end, 30-minute uh, mark. We'll go off topic. We'll continue talking about the K5 if that's what you want to do. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah, GT's front-wheel drive. The other trims are all all-wheel drive. Uh, you get wireless CarPlay in the EX and LX, not in the GT line, not on the GT. So there's your quick update there. And um, yeah, lots of fun little bits in that car. So I've researched a little bit more since that video. We'll talk about that at the... 30 minute mark. Right now we're about to hit the three minute mark and at the three minute mark, we get going. So here we go. All right, everyone, if you've tuned in for the Sedona versus Sorrento video, here we go. This is, uh, this is a video that was requested by our general manager. And uh, basically, yeah, we have a lot of people that sort of, you know, maybe they need one, maybe they need the other. And we're gonna talk about some of the differences because, spoiler alert, this is probably a better car than that one. No question that one outsells this one. But we will talk about the Sorento. Uh, if you want all-wheel drive, this new black line is, has got fancy wheels, but the Sorento, of course, is our all-wheel drive uh, vehicle in this class. We also have a Telluride, which is an even bigger SUV. Telluride seats eight. The Sedona also seats eight. But for a dollar per feature value, you're gonna get a few more practical features here. You're gonna get some styling and all wheel drive on this car. And we're gonna go through what that means, what that looks like, and you get to ask your questions and we will go through that way. So let's take a look. One thing I wanna do right off the top is I'm gonna show you the keys. They are very similar, but we have a couple of features here that I wanna show you. And uh, let me go. All right, here we go. This is the Kia uh, Sedona key. One thing that happened just now as I grabbed this key and was close enough to the car, the mirrors came out. So maybe if I go far enough away, it might uh, fold back in if it senses I've been gone long enough. And you'll see that in a second. I'm not sure if I'm far enough away, but the uh, mirrors there, yeah, see how they fold in? So all you do is approach the car and the car kind of greets you. It's kind of a cool thing that happens on the Sedona and uh, sort of a luxury type feature. And you can see I can open all those doors electronically. I can hold the left and right uh, sliding doors. I can also hold this button and open the trunk. But instead of doing that, all I'm going to do right now, check out the taillights as I do this. I'm going to approach the back of the car with the key in hand. I didn't touch anything. The lights are blinking five times in three seconds. 
and the tailgate opened on its own. I never touched the car. I didn't wave my foot underneath the car. I'm gonna call it a car all day long. Uh, anyway, so what we have here is a lot of our competitors, they have a smart tailgate or something similar, but it works differently. You have to wave your foot under the bumper. That's not safe, especially in a minivan in Canada. When you're standing on snow and ice, maybe you're holding your child, you don't want to stand on one foot on the snow and ice when your hands are full. Uh, you just want to have to approach the car. That is a feature that this vehicle has, which you can turn on and off. You don't have to keep it on. Uh, but that power opening tailgate is only available in this price range on the Sedona. And similar price range on the Sorento will not have it. You have to go right up to the SX model to get it. Actually, the EX model might have it. So just so you know, this particular car won't have that powered tailgate, but you can get it on the Sorento. But it is a pretty cool feature at a pretty good price on this vehicle right here. So we can look at cargo space. We can do all kinds of things. I'm going to keep the key in my pocket right now. In the back of a minivan, you have a ton of space. And this big, deep cargo well uh, down to the floor is about as big as... Uh, you know a regular trunk on a regular car and it's all deep so you feel you've got a ton of space behind these seats more so than you would think normally i have a teddy bear to compare uh, sizes i didn't grab him today maybe i should but i haven't got him right now uh, i have a huge teddy bear which we use to compare cargo space so maybe we'll get him by popular demand a little later in the video or if anybody in my dealership is watching if they want to grab my teddy bear throw him in the room that would be helpful as well you can fold these seats down like that uh, so you have access to lay something across the back seats and uh, with while well, not losing any of this cargo well here. The other thing you can do, you can pull up here. It's quite simple to do. I grabbed the heavier of the two seats, but it's quite easy. Put it back. Even though I'm not left-handed, see how easy that was? Seats fold down and of course, then you got the middle row seats and you have extra space uh, in there. So the middle row seat that can fold down, that can be removed quite easily. And then you've got the side seats. We're going to talk about cargo space in the side in a second. But if you're looking for third row space and you're sticking your uh, guests in the third row, you just can't be a minivan. And uh, this is a seat that I can sit in quite comfortably. Plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom. And I can sit there on a road trip for a long time. One other quick thing I'm going to note. 12 volt power point in the back. A little bit of a cargo net holder. No cargo net with this car, but you have a little holder you can put back there as well. A little tie down there as well. So you could put a large cargo net back here if that's something you're interested in. Another nice thing, you can shut this with this button right here, but maybe you're shorter than I am. As you can see, uh, you know, I here, let's just do it this way. Flip the camera around. Hey, we get to look at my bald head again. That's always fun for everybody. You can see I clearly fit underneath here. I'm six feet tall. Looks like it's a lot closer than it is. So let's just get the camera in the right angle. There we go. You can see I've got tons of space. Maybe you can't reach up to this button right here. If that's the case, no problem. You've got options. You can click it right here on the key fob, or you can click it from inside the vehicle. So power tailgate is nice for that reason, because if you can't reach it when it's up, um, you don't have to grab that handle. Uh, you can just touch the button or do it another way. So I'm gonna just touch the button because I am taller and that's no problem. Over here, uh, real quickly, there is a video on our channel that seems to be quite popular where I do, uh, I think it's a 2019 cargo space, uh, Kia Sedona cargo space. So that's the best video to watch for cargo space, all the flexibility in this vehicle. Um, but yeah, that is a nice option to watch there. Sliding doors on a minivan, of course you guys know this. I just wanna quickly show you the rear seats and then we're gonna do trunk and rear seats on the Sorento and then we're gonna go dash to dash and you'll see some differences there as well. You can see I can tilt these at different lengths. I do have three individual seats. Now to be fair, the middle row is okay. It's uh, about as comfortable as the rear row seats. So you could put someone there for a long term. But when we talk about middle row seats, that's where this car stands out. You have the best middle row seats. You know, maybe the Telluride with its uh, captain's chairs are just about the same. Uh, but again, price range is a little different. And we'll talk about price range, actually jump in there for a second. Uh, we'll jump to price range in just a minute or so here. Uh, but these are the most comfortable seats. What's cool about them is you can move them forward and back individually. You create some space between your guests. And if you need to create cargo space real quickly, you can just simply do this. That's how you can move them forward. Now, again, I could slide that whole thing forward. It would touch the driver's seat. A lot of people talk to us about Chrysler minivans. Let's put it out there. They have what's called stow and go. Those seats fold into the floor. Couple of things you need to know about stow and go seats. First of all, they are very low to the ground, which means your knees are not super comfortable on them. I'm gonna try to put this back with one hand, which is not the way it's designed, but I'm a professional. Something like that. Let me just pop it again. Oh, I think we're, yep. I'm not that professional. Anyways, that's not quite locked in because I pushed it a little awkwardly. But the point is when I jump in here and I sit down, 
you'll see a couple different things. Let me just jump in. I'll flip the camera around. Here we go. All right, come on camera. There we go. You can see I'm six feet tall, tons and tons of headroom. But what I really want you to pay attention to is right here, if I can tilt the camera the right way. Whoops, come on camera. My legs are on the seat the whole way. In a Chrysler minivan, my legs are off the seat because the seats are really low and they're smaller. So Kia says, hey, if you want a cargo van, buy a cargo van. If you want a comfortable van for your family, this is the one to buy. You have larger, more comfortable seats. And a lot of people finance these vans over a long period of time. So let's say you do a seven year finance. If you do a seven year finance, you're living with this van for seven to 10 years probably, right? If you do that, your maybe four year old kid becomes a 14 year old kid pretty quickly. And that kid's gonna be as big as you. So prioritizing seating space is a very, and seating comfort is a very good thing because if you're on a road trip, you don't care that those seats go into the ground. You care about your kids complaining about, I'm not comfortable. You wanna make sure you get comfortable seats. Big reason to get the Sedona, for getting safety, for getting reputation, uh, quality, those kinds of things. We can talk about that all day long. So there's the rear seats, there's the trunk. We're gonna do the same thing over here, rear seats and trunk. And again, if anybody's watching from our dealership, if they wanna bring my teddy bear in, that'd be great. If not, I might go grab him. Teddy bear is my trunk measurement tool. So again, no power tailgate on this particular trim level. Sorry, we should have checked pricing. You know what, why don't we just do that right now so you can see the difference in these. And then I'll get to your questions. I apologize for being a little out of order here. Let's just zip over here, come on. You mean the marketing of the vehicles? What are you talking about? You talking to me? Albert, explain what you mean to me. All right, so we've got LX Plus is $34,595. That is the minivan. And we're comparing that to $36,995 on the Blackline V6 uh, Sorrento that we have here. Oh, sorry, you guys are talking about something else, okay. Okay, so. LX Plus is $34,595 on the minivan. LX Plus V6 is $36,095. We're adding the fancy wheels, and then we'll talk about the black line package in a second, $36,995. So similar pricing. All right. Let's jump over here. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I know it's not the cars that we're talking about today, and that's okay. If you're watching the live comments and you're not watching live with us, uh, don't worry. They're talking about a video I did earlier today. So when we talk about trunk space, the Sorento has a lot. Again, rear seats are folded here, but I can pull them up to give you a sense of the difference. Very easy to pull up. There's a strap here, pull it up like that, put the headrest up like this, and you do have plenty of space back here, but not nearly as much as a minivan. You have some underfloor storage, but not nearly as much as a minivan. So basically what I say is if you have a Sorento, the rear seats, the third row seats, they're more for children or temporary adult seats. I wouldn't stick an adult back there long term where you can do that in the Sedona. So if you have bigger kids, you may have to go with that vehicle and that's okay. That's a good vehicle. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Somebody says, can't wait for the 2021 Sorento. We will talk about all the future cars around the 30 minute mark. Backseat space. Again, a bench seat instead of individual seats. And I don't think that's a problem. You still have the reclining feature. You can see these are reclined a little bit. Uh, we can put them well back. Let me just do that a little bit. All right, you can see there's the big difference in the reclining. So you can recline these seats almost the same way you could the minivan. Same situation here. My legs are flat on the seat. I've got lots of leg room. So pretty good. And these ones move a little bit forward and back in these seven passenger vehicles. Middle row, pretty comfortable in this car, extremely comfortable in the Sedona. You're winning either way. Third row is where you make the decision. Now, the other decision you're making is all wheel drive or front wheel drive. You can get the, uh, um, Sedona in only front wheel drive. The Sorento is in this trim only all wheel drive. Same engine in both. Sorento's got a tiny bit more horsepower, a tiny bit less torque compared to the Sedona. Same engine, same transmission, same type of features up front. Similar lighting up front, projector beam headlights and an LED accent, projector beam headlights and high beams and a projector beam accent there. Projector beam fog lights here, no fog lights on that trim level there. So again, couple more features on this car really we're talking about more style on that car so let me just jump and make sure i have no questions right now and then we're going to go look at the driver's seat where i think you probably all want to see i have a feeling all of the comments are about the video we did earlier today which is a pretty exciting video okay you guys are talking all about something else right okay is there anybody who has any questions about these two cars yet don't worry about the two guys talking about the different stuff if you have a question about these cars i'm happy to answer them 
Da, 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 da. Okay, you guys are totally talking about a different vehicle video. Okay, I'm totally happy to answer any questions on these vehicles, so don't be intimidated by guys talking about different stuff. That's fine. I'm here to answer your questions about these vehicles until about the 30 minute mark, and then we'll go off topic. All right, I'm gonna show you the dash on these two cars because there's a couple things that are the same, and I'm gonna start in the Sorento because the Sorento has a little bit less. First of all, the black line package, let's just talk about that real quick. Black wheels, they're 19 inch wheels, so they're a bigger wheel, the same size as the full size of wheels. Up top, you have the uh, black line uh, roof rails there, and you have black mirrors. That is just a style package on the LX Plus Sorento. So again, if you're looking at a Sorento, this is an LX Plus with the black edition is a style package. That's really all it is. Uh, we're gonna jump into the driver's seat now. I am gonna close the trunk because we're gonna show uh, backup cameras as well. All right. Slam that probably a little harder than I needed to. It's okay, these cars are made of high quality steel. All right, jumping in here. Oops, key's not detected. I have the other key in my pocket and I, I felt a key in my pocket, but not the right key. Sorento I wanna talk about because the Sorento has been updated since it came out, 2016. And a lot of people jump in a Sorento or they've looked at a Sorento in the past and they think they know everything about it. And then they get in this one, they're fairly impressed. So again, LX Plus package is what this is with an appearance package. Blind spot detection is down there. You're gonna turn the car on, you have a nice digital dash screen in the center there. Left side tack, right side speedometer. Let me just turn the fan speed down here. All right. As we come over here, you have an eight inch screen. When the Sorento first came out in 2016, you didn't have a screen here at all until the very higher trim levels. So this is available on all of them. And you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay that moves navigation right up here. This is gonna be the same in the Sedona or the Sorento. Coming down here, you have a dual zone climate control in this LX. But again, you have um, tri-zone climate, climate control, which we'll talk about in the Sedona. So a little bit extra comfort. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, same in the Sorento and the Sedona. Down here, USB port to plug in for your Android Auto Apple CarPlay. This particular one has a wireless charge pad. We'll have to see if the uh, Sorento has it. This is still the trim plastic. This is normally black, but that's still the shipping plastic on here uh, that I didn't take off yet. Throw the car in reverse, and you have a very clear backup camera. So you can see that very, very clearly. And uh, we'll put that in park again for a second. Scrolling down a little further, eight speed automatic transmission. So that's the same transmission you would have uh, on both vehicles. The difference with this one is this vehicle can tow 5,000 pounds with a V6 engine. The Sedona can only tow 3,500 pounds. So both good towing capacity, but if you have a 3,500 pound trailer, you're gonna wanna move up to this vehicle because this one can tow it. You can put it in drive, you can tap it this way, and you can tap up or down to choose your own gears. And again, there's eight gear ratios. When the car first came out, it only had six gear ratios. Drive modes have also been updated. Drive mode is comfort, eco, sport, and smart. Uh, one of my uh, fans here from uh, Florida always wants me to talk about the drive modes. He loves the comfort mode on this car. He says it uh, just makes it really great to drive. Uh, I'm a big fan of the smart mode. I think it blends uh, economy with also uh, when you get on the throttle, it doesn't do some weird shifting things. In the eco mode, um, if you get on the throttle heavy, it can really delay that upshift. And that's sometimes what you want it to do if you want to just drive efficiently. Uh, if you're driving economically anyways, the eco mode is just fine. But if you kind of sometimes drive economically and sometimes you get in the throttle, the smart mode is, to me is the best way to go. Comfort mode kind of, like, uh, like I said, uh, one of my uh, friends on uh, here, Big fan of comfort mode on this vehicle. Always wants me to mention that. So there we go, I did. Scrolling across the dash here, uh, you can see sort of that cool line that kind of comes all the way in. It's one of those things that sort of stands out in person. There is a wood-like trim over here. It is not wood, but you get soft touch everywhere. That's a leather uh, soft touch uh, armrest. And it is cloth seats here with nice bolstering, nice size to them. A little bit of pattern in there with the uh, stitching and contrasting stitching. And again, there's the seats in the middle row there. So, uh, Comfortable, practical, nice features, pretty good features, I would say. Uh, cruise control, of course, is standard here. And like I said, the blind spot detection. Now let's take a look at the Sedona. You get a little bit more in the Sedona. Again, this Sedona costs less than this. Uh, fuel consumption we'll get to, yeah, no problem. Uh, fuel consumption is a good question. So we're just gonna hop in here. So when I say you get a little bit more here, let's talk about that really quickly. 
Uh, inside, let's turn it on. Push button start in both these cars, of course, because we had those uh, smart key fobs. Same type of dash. You've got these tunnels in here, which make the camera, camera's only got one eye, so I can look down this tunnel or down that tunnel. When you have two eyes, you can see them both clearly with no sort of, uh, you know how they're sort of sh uh, shaded out a little bit, covered a little bit. So this one, I shouldn't say more, in more stuff, but it's different stuff. Um, scrolling over here, same screen exactly. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. That means you get navigation through your smartphone, the most up-to-date maps, the most up-to-date routing anywhere in the world. You can put that right up here on the touch screen and make it super simple. On this mirror, you do have, come on, let's try to focus here. Uh, there we go. Those three buttons right there can open a garage door, up to three garage doors, auto dimming mirror. What's nice about up here is you can shut the trunk. Let me just sort of get that a little closer. Shut the trunk right there. You can shut either of the driver or passenger side uh, rear doors. Lighting is all here. And of course, this is a typical minivan feature that I'm a big fan of. Hey, there I am. And there are all of my kids that I take to work. There are none. That's why I'm here. Just kidding. I love my kids. They're great. It wouldn't be good if they were here all day, but I'm just saying. All right. You do have manual controls here. So I say you know, upgrade, maybe this isn't an upgrade for you. Maybe you really want the automatic controls and the dual zone temperature controls. Uh, you do again have um, simple to use controls, but you have a rear air conditioning as well, which we can turn on. Uh, if I turn to the fan on, there we go, it is on. So um, that is kind of nice because you can do a couple things with it. You can allow your rear passengers to control it or you can lock them out and not let them control it. So as we scroll around to here, I'll show you what that controller looks like. It is the middle row, right side, they can control their temperature. They control where they want the airflow. And that makes them really comfortable. And there's vents in the roof right there. So really comfortable. They can have it wherever they want their air and be comfortable. One thing I really, really like about this car, powered passenger seat. Now we mentioned the uh, power driver's seat. I don't think the, when I talk about more features, I'm pretty sure the uh, Sorento over there does not have a powered seat. It does not have a powered passenger seat. But check out what you can do here. I can move that seat forward just by hitting my thumb here. And from the driver's seat, I can tilt it forward. What that means is two things. One, when I pick my kids up from school, because yes, they're going back to school, I can open that door right from the driver's seat. I can move the seat forward. They can come in. They can bring their backpack. I can create all kinds of space for them back there, and they can't complain to me at all. Now, when I go pick up my mom, who's a little older than me, I can tilt this back, and I can give her some leg room, and I don't have to tell her where to find all the seat controls. I can just make her comfortable on her own. So you can get your passenger comfort from the driver's seat. It's a feature that I think is underrated and I think it's worth a fortune in those nice moments where you just wanna get your passengers in and make them comfortable, make them safe. Same thing here with the transmission. Again, tows 3,500 pounds. Uh, you can put it in drive, you can go to the manual mode. I'm just gonna get it out of the way so I can show you. There's another wireless charge pad, USB port for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. This little light turns orange when your phone is charging, just so you know. And again, uh, put it in, Park. Drive modes, not so much on this car. You do have the eco button or the normal mode. I don't think that's a problem for us. I think uh, two modes is fine on this minivan. You don't need a sport mode in a minivan. That would just be silly. Uh, you're not driving this for sport. And uh, here you go. You got rump brosers, as I like to call them. Heated seats in the front two seats and the heated steering wheel, which is what you expect. In addition to the backup camera, which we'll show you in a second, you have backup beepers. Those beepers be progressively quicker as you approach something. So when you have a minivan, you might have a lot of kids around. And if you have a lot of kids around, sometimes you don't notice that one toy in the rear view mirror that you're supposed to be looking at or in your backup camera here. What's nice about those beepers is they will warn you progressively quicker where something is. And it will tell you in the dash which side of the car. So in the center of the screen here, it'll tell you uh, left side, center, or right, or left side, center, or right side of the car. It'll show you where those, where that item is. And then you can take a peek in the camera again. And that crystal clear camera where you can see the lines on the floor there, uh, you can find it in there. So depending on what you're looking for, I'm a big fan of somebody looking for the best value for the dollar. It's in the minivan. If you want style, if you want all wheel drive, that black line is a pretty cool style. I quite like that car. Um, you do have uh, all wheel drive in that car and you have 5,000 pound towing capacity. Roof racks on both. So if you're camping or if you wanna take a cargo box or something like that, you can put extra cargo up there. No problem, either one. Cruise control over here. This center display, same thing on the other wheel in the Sedona. Just can pull, control some of the menus in the center there. So these controls here at your fingertips, control the menu. Left side here is Bluetooth and uh, radio controls. And of course you've got the automatic climate control, fog lights on this car. 
Uh, this one does not have blind spot detection, but it does have the wide angle mirror on the driver's side. So kind of like the, as I like to say, the sort of uh, original blind spot detection. You can see my whole arm is there, but just my hand. That mirror actually is super helpful for seeing someone in your blind spot. Power windows, power mirrors, what you would expect. And of course you can fold those in like we just did there, or you can fold them all the way out, or you can have them react to the key like we showed you in the video earlier. So Sorrento, Sedona, you guys tell me what you think. If there's something you want to see in this video, I know we've got a lot of talk about the video I did earlier today where we introduced a brand new car, the K5, uh, but there will be people tuning in later to this video that maybe want to know a little bit about this car. So let's see what you've got for questions. Uh, let me just see. Those features would be available in Sedona. Okay, you guys are talking Sienna, Pacifica. All right, Pacifica is another uh, brand. Looking at replacing a Grand Caravan, very interested, so curious as to what happened with the rear sunroof option. Okay, so good question. So the there was a version of the Sedona that had sort of like Lazy Boy style middle seats with a little leg rest coming out. They did have a rear sunroof. Uh, the only rear sunroof we've ever had that I know of where the sunroof opened in the front and the rear. Uh, we've had one of those here. I did a used car video on it not that long ago. We had one in like that. Uh, that model sold in such low volumes that Kia decided to take their um, money and invest it in other higher volume cars. Things like the Seltos, those kinds of things came out because of that. Um, so they basically took that money, invested in other uh, vehicles because it wasn't a huge seller. And now we've got the Telluride, which has a lot of those features. It, this rear sunroof on this Telluride doesn't open, but it does have that. So because we have another eight passenger vehicle, they've taken away that real top line Sedona. You now have the Telluride where you can get into there. And that's uh, probably the best uh, way to see that um, vehicle. Um, or that feature in the vehicle. They did take it away simply because of a sales thing. Uh, so you guys got to remember that what happens with uh, models that are not huge sellers, they still cost money to stock. They cost money to, uh, for various reasons, they cost everybody some money. And when they can reinvest that in another area, they do. These are the volume selling models. Uh, this black trim line is new for us in the Sorento, but that's really where that went. Uh, it basically went into the Telluride. Uh, you were basically similar money now for a entry level Telluride and that top of the line Sedona, not too far away anyways. So that's basically why they did that. We, we figured with the Telluride on the lot next to it, you're probably not gonna sell a whole lot of those minivans anymore, uh, being as they're both eight passenger vehicles. So that was a good question. And let me just see if there's any other questions. Somebody posted a video, a YouTube, oh no, just YouTube things. Oh, there we go. So there we go, fuel consumption for each. Let's talk fuel consumption real quick. Let's just scroll over here. Good question, because one is all-wheel drive and one is a smaller vehicle and a bigger vehicle, so I have it all open here for you. The 3.3 liter V6 in the Sorento, 12.395 for liters per 100 kilometers, 12.3 and 9.5, and in the Sedona, 12.799, lower is better. So interesting, V6, uh, four-wheel drive Sorento, 12.395, a little bit lower than 12.799. Now I will say, the Sorento in particular, but really both of these vehicles, I am able to exceed those uh, mileage uh, numbers, especially on the highway on these cars. I haven't really tried a city loop, but you can ex exceed these. Uh, lower is better, so you're using less liters per 100 kilometers. So Americans measure miles per gallon, how many miles you go per fuel use. We measure how much fuel use you use per kilometer, so per distance. Uh, basically the number of liters per kilometer. So we use 12.3 uh, liters per 100 kilometers, I think it was on the Sorento. So uh, you, that's just how we measure. Lower is better because basically it makes more sense because if you use no fuel, what does that work out to in miles per gallon? It's you know like a 99.9 .9 miles per gallon kind of thing. So no fuel in a vehicle would be zero liters for 100 kilometers. To me, it's a more accurate way to keep it. And keep in mind, in America, you guys are pretty much the only ones not on the metric system. So uh, it, sometimes metric is a little more logical than the American system. And I quite prefer liters per 100 kilometers, even though it's not familiar to everybody. Um, but yeah, how many liters of fuel you use per 100 kilometers distance. So a little bit better in the Sorento, even though you have all-wheel drive compared to here. Oh, we got some work going outside, out, on, out, going on on outside the building. Anyways, a uh, little bit better fuel efficiency in the Sorento than in this car. I will say though, highway fuel efficiency, it would shock me if you weren't pretty close to on um, both these vehicles. That's uh, that's the real answer here is a lot of people come back in their Sorento or sorry, in their Sedona 
after a road trip and go, I can't believe on my big long road trip how well, how good fuel economy I got. And like I said, I'm able to beat that fuel efficiency number on the highway with this car. All right, we are approaching the 30 minute mark. If there's any more questions on these two vehicles, I'm gonna take them right now. If not, we will go off topic. I did a video this morning a lot of you are interested in. So uh, how's the range on it? What's your max range so far? <laughs> oh yeah, you guys are talking about uh, the Euro. There we go. Okay. Keep it sports mode permanently. Oh, all right. Okay. So we're talking about the range on an EV real quick. So just off topic, so the live comments are talking about some of our EV products. Uh, $499 is the top range that one of our EV buyers bought there. I will say the highest I've seen, I think, officially, the, the highest that someone's actually shown me in a picture is uh, 529 liters per 100 kilometers, or sorry, 529 uh, kilometers on an EV uh, from our store. So uh, they, I've heard rumors of more, but uh, there are some people that are, are tweaking over 500 kilometers. So there we go. Okay, so you guys want to talk K5, tell me what you want to talk about real quick, and I will jump in with that, and we'll continue that for about five minutes or so. Cruising on GTA, I do notice a lot of key dealerships, but who stands out in a Platinum Prestige dealership compared to those that are not? But what stands out in a Platinum Prestige dealership? Okay, so Platinum Prestige dealer is an award that we won. Good question. Um, it basically puts us, this is the best way to put it right here. You can just read it right there. One of the most distinctive dealer recognition programs, Kia Platinum Prestige is... It, Prestige is awarded to the top performing three percentile dealers or among all key dealers in the world. So we are a top three percentile key dealer in the world. That's an award that we won and I'm pretty proud of that. We're pretty proud of that. I heard somebody say something about tints. I don't know if you were talking about tint on the car. Both of the rear windows on these are tinted. Front windows, of course, in Canada can't be legally tinted from the factory. You can do that your own. All right, around the world. Yeah, that's kind of a big award. So when we won this award, we also won Dealer of the Year. So we had a pretty good year that year, um, Canadian Dealer of the Year. And uh, I'm just personally taking credit for all of it. Are there heated rear seats in the Sedona on any trim? Not in the Sedona. The Sorento, you can get heated rear seats. Anytime we have heated rear seats to this point, it's only been the seat bottoms. Uh, but the Telluride, Sorento, uh, Soul, Nero... Uh, there are a number of cars with heated rear seats not on the Sorento or not on the Sedona right now. Excuse me. With the video being done. Oh, I missed somebody's comment. Let me just jump over and catch up to the comments here. Da, 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 da. With the video bay all done now, has it served its purpose for your dealership? So the video bay was originally designed as a delivery bay for us, uh, where we can deliver cars in the bad weather. Uh, I totally stole it. I stole it during COVID. I've now called it the video bay. Um, it has become something I can use very regularly. It helps us with pictures, uh, especially in the winter months where we can take better pictures of cars. And uh, so we quite like it. We had it used as a tire room. We were just storing tires in here. So we didn't need it for that. So it doesn't make sense for a lot of dealers to build a room like this, but we did just because um, we are pretty heavy in the video and pictures and uh, it's great for deliveries in cold weather as well. Both car rear and New Brunswick wanted, just want to know if those come standard for both vehicles. Uh, sorry, Vaughn 33. Can you just re-ask that question? I didn't understand what you were asking there. Uh, why don't minivans he have he why don't minivans have heated rear seats? Um, I don't know. Like some people are saying, it's because the seats come out. That's a possibility. Um, I think it's just really the trim levels that we have in minivans now. We've got rid of our higher uh, trim levels. So uh, okay, the tint, both cars in the rear. Yeah. So when you're looking at this car, this window and those windows, those are tinted on every uh, Sedona, to the best of my knowledge that we have now. Uh, and then same thing with the Sorento over here. There and back is all tinted all the way around. Sounds tech and HVAC, HVAC related when it comes to seats. Um, yeah, Seltos versus Sportage next. Yeah, I've had, I did a Seltos versus Sportage and that seems to be a popular asking. We did one and it was popular online. I, I didn't think it was a need to do another one, but maybe it's time to do that again. We can do that. Uh, there we go. So we got some answers there. Is there any other questions about the cars I have here or the video I did this morning? I'm willing to answer that for a couple minutes. Don't forget to click the like button. Yeah, that'd be great. Do me a favor, kick the like button if you're on. There's like 23 of you on right now. I got nine likes, so I figure a few of you could probably help me out with that like button. Uh, you guys know how it works. That helps us out. And if I could earn your subscription as well, that would be uh, great. If you, if you want to know about the upcoming K5, nobody's going to have more videos on that than us. Nobody's going to have better videos, hopefully. Uh, certainly not in Canada. We'll do our best uh, to give you all the information we can. We did one this morning. Sort of a temporary hijacking the chat room. Key is awesome. Yeah, you guys are in trouble for hijacking the chat room. You all owe me lunch or something. All right. Uh, yeah, we had a pretty exciting video. A lot of our regulars have been waiting for that K5 this morning, and we did a quick video this morning, which, of course, was earlier than our 2 o'clock regular time, so some of our regulars missed that, and uh, that's what we got. <laughs> you guys are going to send me lunch. That would be great. 
Teddy is in the other room. I forgot to bring him. To my office is just behind this wall, and Teddy sits right next to me. He's uh, Teddy is what I use to compare. Um, we'll send over Big Smoke Burger. Yeah, that'd be all right. Anyways, uh, Teddy is in the other room. I use him to measure trunk space on the video because if I show you a trunk and it fills the screen, you really can't compare. Um, if you really needed him, I could have done him, but I think we're past the 30-minute mark. We've covered that. Uh, we'll bring him in next video. He's fine. All right. Is K5 arriving next month? Okay, so I just asked Pat about that. Pat's our dealer principal. Uh, I have no official information on um, when the K5 is actually showing up. We are expecting it in the third quarter. Um, pricing for that car is going to be released on September 2nd. Um, that tells me possibly September, but I don't know. Uh, as I find out, I will let you know when we see them on order. Uh, if, they're, if they're shipping, you'll know here. I'll tell you in some of our live videos. That's a good time to update you guys with that kind of stuff. Uh, short answer is I don't have an official date, uh, but sooner. I, obviously, they're out in the States. We're waiting for them in Canada. Your K5 info was sourced from Kia Canada? Absolutely. I finally got official Canadian information on the K5 and I read through for about 30, 35 minutes, all the specs that we had. Uh, maybe not the most exciting video, but if you want the information, it's all there. Uh, guessing the GT fully loaded. Yeah, you guys can guess at prices. I can't talk prices until September 7th or September 2nd. Uh, at that point I will. And uh, yeah, so when I, Albert made a good point. That can be 90% re uh, reliable. The information that I said this morning in that video is information that could change at any point if it does. Uh, you know, I was clear in my video, that's the information we have. Some things are not going to change. Like we know all trim levels except for the top line GT are going to be all wheel drive. We know with the engines, I'm not expecting any of that to change. Sometimes the odd little trim bit or engine or something changes between now and then, but usually those are pretty accurate, but they do reserve the right to change that. They don't want to do that. Had I come from Kia Worldwide to be sketchier? Yeah, Kia Worldwide is not an accurate uh, source for me because the trim lines will be different around the world. Each country decides what they put in a trim line and Canada just released what they're putting in our trim lines. So pretty excited about it. I think it'll be fun. Uh, be, yes, it would be considering how the US version turned out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, so I intend, just so you guys know with the K5, I intentionally did not read a lot of K5 information because uh, I didn't want a lot of the American stuff stuck in my head and then I get confused between the Canadian and American. Now that I've seen the Canadian specs, I will spend some time looking at the American stuff just so that uh, I know a little bit of what you guys are know what's out there. But uh, I did avoid that just because I don't want to have the wrong information in my head and then say it on a video like this. All right, we are at 37 minutes. That's plenty of time. Uh, feel free to watch that uh, video this morning, the K5 video. Like I said, grab some popcorn, grab a drink. You'll need one because it's just me sitting in front of a blank wall reading a spec sheet. Uh, but that is the best place to get uh, current information on that car. I don't think anybody else has put it up yet. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Again, if you want to hit that like, that'd be great. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great as well. I will be back Monday and uh, we'll go from there. Have a great weekend, everyone.